All right, so recent uh, research from the Pew Research Center has found three quarters of Americans own a smartphone. I think it's probably more than that, but that's what they oh, found. Well. And everybody uses their smartphone for everything in life. I mean, you can barely get dressed without looking at your phone. So that brings up the question, are some of us becoming addicted to our devices? Joining us to talk about it is Dr. Sabrina Fabi. All right, Dr. Fabi, I think a lot of people might even get electronics for Christmas here. So how do we sort of balance our time and really know if we've moved into the zone of addiction. I know, so it's kind of scary. A, a recent study that just came out of Korea took 19-year-old boys or teenagers and compared their brains using scans to see those that actually showed some level of addiction based on surveys and then compared them to 19-year-old teenagers who did not show addictive tendencies to their smartphone or devices. And what they found was that there were actually neurological changes in the brain that were already being demonstrated in 19-year-olds. Uh, specifically because there's a neurotransmitter, a little signal in our brain that seems to be increased. It's called GABA, and it's a brain depressor in a way. Mm. It inhibits uh, the brain's chemistry that actually excites us or makes us happy. Uh, and this is actually happening as a function of being on our smartphone, specifically using certain apps. So would that mean then that as these kids are getting older and their brains continue to form, that they're just maybe less reactive to certain things because of the lack of that uh, part of the brain? Well, what, what we see from it is that it actually correlated with an increased incidence of depression and anxiety. Uh, and so those that I guess would be expected to have more generalized anxiety disorder or major depressive episodes as they continue to age because of this exposure. The positive is when they actually took these 19 uh, year olds and of the 20 of them, 12 of them, when they exposed them to cognitive therapy, eight weeks of behavioral and cognitive therapy, they were able to reverse these changes in the brain. But there were only 12 of the 20, so that's only 60%. And again, Again, these are just 19 year olds who've been exposed to these gadgets for a certain amount of time. So you can only imagine what the cumulative damage must be that we just don't know about since they're really, they are really recently new. Mm -hmm. You know, I know oftentimes, Dr. Fabi, we kind of like rail on kids for spending so much time on their phones. But the reality is a lot of times it's learned behavior that you go to a restaurant, you see parents who are also on their phones. In fact, Andrew Luria is on his phone. Right now, right now, Facebook or doing something. <laughs> um, so you talk about the brain changes for you know teenagers, but can the same be said for adults? Absolutely, they're copying our behavior, and we're really ultimately who's leading this. So um, the best thing to do is perhaps turn off your phone uh, while you're playing with your kids or having dinner. You know, basically recognizing the impact that it has, and that they're going to be exposed to it for many more years than we've ever been exposed to it, and that it's actually having neurochemical changes and actual changes in the gray matter of our brain, which is what they most recently found uh, that even Facebook executives commented on because they realized that it's now actually mimicking uh, de like actually dependent behavior that we see in people that may be addicted to drugs and other forms of addictions. We're seeing very similar changes in the gray matter of our brain because of smartphones. Um, and so this was never the intent of obviously creating many of these social media platforms. The intent was to connect people, but what these Facebook executives have recently come out saying is that it's actually created more fickle relationships between others and people mm -hmm. are really trying to mimic uh, per perfect lives that are actually portrayed that are not necessarily true and as a result are showing addictive behavior. Yeah, we often say everyone is comparing, you know, your reality with everyone else's highlight reel. So good to have you, Dr. Fabi, as thanks, always. Thank thanks you. for having me, John.